Hello, it's me, and today we're going to go ahead and tackle the next step in our mix-up journey, and that's going to be the 4x4 mix-up plus puzzle. Uh, so in order to solve this puzzle, you really ought to know how to do a, uh, well, of course, a 4x4, um, which is your standard 4x4 cube so that you can deal with all of the parodies and what happens, and also the 4x4 mix-up. You should know your way around that as well because we're going to be using much of a similar concepts. The main difference is you have these different layers that can mix up um, independently. So there you have that. So that's that's what a mix-up puzzle is. Is a mix-up puzzle is where you can put edges in center positions and then turn the puzzle with the edges maintained in the center position and of course centers and edge positions and maintain that as well. So you should know how to do that. I'm going to be borrowing on some of the concepts that we talked about with the 3x3 mix-up plus. So you should know how to do a mix-up and a mix-up plus. If you don't know how to do a 4x4 mix-up, that's okay because I'm going to be going over that again while I'm doing this. And if you don't know the 3x3 mix-up plus, well, um, that's probably okay too, I guess, but it's, it'll, it'll certainly give you a leg up. So the puzzle itself moves really like a 4x4 with uh, slightly different size layers. Um, but just like the 4x4 mix-up, you can move this into central position, edges in central position, and end up turning, um, keeping the centers in that edge position. But in addition to that, because it's a plus, you've got these extra pieces over here. And that has to be dealt with. And unlike the 3x3, you can actually separate it out like this. So it causes even more chaos, and I would say it's the next step up above the 3x3 mix-up plus because you're using the same things with a little bit extra in terms of uh, reduction. Uh, here's the good news too, there really isn't any new algorithms that I have to give you with this. As a matter of fact, I think there's less because you had a parity situation with a 3x3 mix-up plus that you had to get out of with, a, um, with a, a certain technique. You don't have to do that here because you can deal with parodies as you would a 4x4. So you don't have to do that, um, that sort of central turn technique. Um, but I do want to very quickly remind you of an algorithm um, that I'd shown initially over here. And that's a way of taking these middle mix-up pieces and doing a three cycle from this to here, this to here, and this to here. What's going to be very important about that is that when you take these two, and you can only move them together, just like we did with this, this will slide to here, this will come to here and rotate, and this will come down to here and rotate. So here's an example of what that is. Basically, you do an M move. Actually, that's an MI move. You do a U, and then an M. Then you do a D. Then you reverse it with an MI, UI, M, and then DI. So as promised, this white one slid to here without rotating. This red one went to here and rotated. And this yellow, uh, orange one rather, went to, he went to here and rotated. So that's going to be important in terms of getting these in for the future. So just to show that algorithm again, it's a very simple, fast commutator. Doesn't take much thought. And then one more will slide this where it needs to be. So you can see it all getting in. So it's kind of a useful way of, of doing a three cycle with the proper rotation. Okay, that's really it. Aside from that, um, I would recommend knowing beginner's method. Uh, now, I did get a request of, to maybe go over beginner's method. So I'll, I'll just kind of list some of the algorithms. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to kind of uh, forge ahead with this. The other thing to bear in mind, too, is I want you to understand that when you do a mix-up move. As you move this up over here, pay attention to what's actually mixing up when you double turn over here. What you did is you took this piece here and exchange it with this. So these guys are exchanging. So you can see this moving across here. So what that means is that these pieces and these pieces are exchanging. So on the bottom front and the back middle basically, back part of the up. So these are exchanging. So just understand that pattern because that's going to be important as well. All right, so just to show you the movement of the puzzle, um, I really like it despite the number of pieces. Um, I've had it almost pop on me, but never actually pop. So I'm just doing a four by four scramble. And this sort of represents the um, opposite technique that I'm gonna be using. Um, I'm retracing my stuff in, uh, steps in terms of how I'm gonna solve this. Okay, see what happened there that, that rotated. So sometimes the middle piece has been known to rotate on me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some mix-up scrambles by taking these two and mixing it up with these two. Well, there's no sense in doing that. They're the same color. So if I go like this and go one, two, you can see I've now de-reduced these. And again, um, 
that's going to be, I'm retracing my steps as to how I'm going to solve this. Keep working around here. And anytime I see um, an inner edge matched up with an outer edge, I move it up and I go like this just to enhance the challenge. Okay, so that's pretty good. I've done some, um, most of these are lifted away from the uh, inner areas. So now we commence with the mix upping. Now, because I can do different, do a little bit more over here, what I can do is I can move this up and start mixing it up that way. I can move it up like this. So I'm going to just start doing that. Move this up here, and then maybe just move one. Now this kind of limited me, so I'm going to move this over here, start mixing it up like so. Mixing up where edges are supposed to be, and you can see it really has this very chaotic look about it. I'm going to try to separate these out more as well. So this is one of those puzzles where the actual scramble kind of takes a little bit of, I don't want to say algorithms, but it certainly takes some uh, strategies here. Uh huh. I'm just trying to find my way through. Okay. Okay. So there we have a full, completely worked on, messed up 7x7 seven seven, uh, puzzle. Uh, the only things that aren't completely bandaged are your 2x2 two two corners. The rest is all messed up. And looking at this, it has a very chaotic uh, look to it. Uh, there's something about a puzzle that um, scrambles and still looks like it's native shape, but just has a variety of different colors that I, I enjoy and I and I think I even prefer. However, with the shape shifters, there's almost a symmetry to the chaos also, that when it's all shape shifted and scrambled, it almost has a like a sculpture look to it, almost artistic look. This is truly chaotic. You look at this, and there's nothing um, symmetric about this. It just looks like a jumbled, mixed up mess. Um, I don't know if, 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 it, if it even has really an appealing aesthetic look to it. It looks like somebody literally just uh, broke the puzzle somehow, that there's no way these pieces really should not be that way. Someone took it apart and just haphazardly glued it on. So it really has this almost ugly looking um, uh, effect with its, uh, with its scramble as it's all mixed up, which although isn't pleasant to look at and looks like it would be an impossibility almost to solve, there is a satisfaction in slowly getting it back into order. So the steps that we're going to take is we want to put this back into its cube form. Um, so we want it to look more uh, like its flat form, and then we're going to just uh, start the reduction. So we're going to do this the same way that we've done the other mix-up cubes. We basically want to put all of the edges from the center position to the edge position, and the centers in the center position. But the main priority at this point is going to be taking these ones that have an edge and a center together and match them up with a proper edge. Put the two in and then put it in, in an edge position. To put it in an edge position, so let's say we've got this here and I want to match this up, say, with this. Well, I'm going to move it like so and I want to bind these two together and then put them in a center position. Well, what I'm going to do to maximize that is let's take this, which is an edge and center, and let's put this in a center position. The way that we're going to do that is by turning it one click this way. I take that center position and put it in an edge position. So I've got an edge over an edge, and I can do a beginner's method algorithm when I'm placing the middle layer and putting the edge into here. So once again, it starts out here, center position, this is an edge position, I move it here, now they're both edge positions. And that algorithm, which um, you should know if you know how to do a 3x3, three three, you R, U, I, R, I, U, I, F, I, U, F. It did swap it here, but you've got to remember to turn it back. Okay, so now this is in center position. And I'm going to move this over to here, so this will come to here. This will come to here. So I can place two, I can reduce two edges. It doesn't matter to me if they're the same color or not. That's not what's important now. Now before I move it, this is going to bandage me, so I have to substitute that with any one of these guys. So I'm going to take this, bump it out of the way, move one that won't bandage me, and move it back. It won't bandage because it's not, it's not put along this side, it's just along this side. Alright, anything else that's going to bandage me? This one, let's put this one in place. So bump it out of the way, move this one in its place, bring it back. So now you can see it's freely movable. So I can just go splat. This is put in, 
and this is put in. So I put two in. Once I've done that, let's go ahead and put this one in a center position because we want to move this one in and put this one in an edge position. So move it one click over here and then we do our exchange. U R U I R I U I F I U F and remember to click it back. Okay, so this is here. Um, well, this is here, this is here. We can put these together. We've got this here. And let's find another one, this singlet. I'm going to put this into here so that this can come into here. So basically, I'm just going to do a click over here, put this from edge to edge, and that'll become our center. Same algorithm. Turn, turn, and turn. And then click it back. Okay, so now we're ready to move. This one is going to block it. You can see it's facing the wrong way. Let's substitute it with this guy over here. So out of the way, move this one in, bring it back. Same thing with this. We get this out of the way. And now we can move them in. So this will come here. Well, actually, okay, yeah, so this will come here. This, let's move these over here. I'm just trying to maximize how many I put in at once. Bang. So this is in, and these two are in. So now we can do the same thing. Let's put this in edge position and substitute it with this so that this can be in center position so it can be reduced. Again, we're not doing the same color, we're just getting the shapes in. Getting a pair of edges. That's going to come later. And click it back. Okay, so this is here. These are eventually going to turn around later. We don't have to worry about that as of yet. Let's find another singlet, which is right over here. And let's put it in where this is. So match it up. And pop it in. Turn and turn, and we pop this like so. Okay, so now these two can join. I can move this all the way to here. Um, we're not bandaged by anything, so boom. So these two are paired, and now we find what we can exchange it with. Let's exchange it with this, because this is a singlet here. And turn, 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 turn. Just getting it into central position so that I can reduce it. Bang, splat. Okay, so there should be another one to put in, another singlet to reduce it, right over here. So we're going to put this into a central position. It doesn't matter where. Um, let's put it into this position. So we're just going to take this center, put this in edge position by going bang, bang, and now we're going to swap these two. R, U, I, R, I. So we're basically working backwards from our scramble. Scramble, okay. And plink. All right, this is messing it up. So let's get it out of the way. Move this one in instead. And boom. So this should be the last one. Nope, actually it's not. Well, here's, here's what's interesting. I, I don't want to move it in with the center because I'm about to create a, a couplet, or a singlet rather. So I'm just gonna move it like this. In that way, that, that won't be an issue. So I've got this. This was the last one. And now I've got the center in edge position. So now I can fully exchange a completed center with a completed edge. Move it in this position, both in edge position. U, R, U, I, R, I. Turn, turn, and turn. And then what you'll find is at this point, all centers are in center position. All edges are in edge position. To flip this, well, that's easy. We did the same thing with this guy over here and with any mix-up cube. We want to rotate this around. So we're going to take this from edge position, put it in center position. But I can't rotate it from here because I'm going to start rotating these um, centers. So I'm going to just uh, put this to the side, to the right side. And now I can rotate this, keeping everything in the proper position. I don't want to put um, centers that are in edge positions and rotate that around, but these edges don't matter. So, boom, just round that, put that in there, bring it back, bring it up, and you, you can see this is now in. I'm going to do that with every one of these that I see. Edge to center position, move it to the right center position, do whatever turn I want, move it back in front of us, and move it up. 
So same thing here. Turn. And now you can see just by this how less chaotic this is starting to look. And turn it in and up. Okay, do we have any more? And the answer is no. So what we have now is everything is in the proper position. They're no longer in mix-up positions. Edges are in the proper edge position and they're rotated correctly. And the centers are in the proper center position.